the tenth session of the United Nations General Assembly convenes. Dr. Lund, chairman of the Netherlands delegation and temporary president of the assembly, opens the session. In this world, let us not fail the millions who look upon the United Nations as mankind's supreme hope, and let us carry out our duties fully conscious of our heavy responsibilities. Shortly after the meeting opens, V.M. Molotov takes the floor to raise the question of Chinese representation in the United Nations. This is done in softer words than usual. Henry Cabot Lodge, Jr. now moves not to consider this question during the current year and is supported by the United Kingdom. However, Anthony Nutting has this to say. In the view of my government, the question of Chinese representation in the United Nations is one of the issues which will have to be settled before normal, peaceful relations can be re-established in the Far East. India's Krishna now, Menon. The fact that the United Nations, or indeed any country, does not recognize China would not sort of wipe out China. The United States proposal is then adopted by a roll call vote of 42 in favor and 12 against. Temporary Chairman Dr. Lanz of the Netherlands declares that Ambassador Mazda of Chile has been unanimously elected president of the 10th session. A hearty welcome is accorded American press representatives as they land in Nassau. They're here at the invitation of the Nassau Development Board and the Hilton G. Hill Travel Agency. The purpose of the seven-day luxury tour for the distinguished members of the Fourth Estate is to aid in expanding Nassau as a tourist attraction for Negro travelers. Put up at a smart hotel, they will spend a full week attending parties and sightseeing. United States Air Force pilots arrive at Republic Aviation Corporation to take delivery of new jet fighter planes. The ferry control officer in command of this group is Captain Charles Cooper of Washington, D.C. Captain Cooper and his pilots pick up the new thunder streaks and thunder flashes and deliver them to Air Force bases all over the world. Today, his command will deliver a group of F-84F fighter bombers, which are listed in the more than 650 miles an hour category. Careful checking of route, weather, and altitude must be made prior to takeoff. The Air Force has disclosed that the Thunderstreak can carry the atom bomb. It holds the official Los Angeles to New York transcontinental speed record, 2,445 miles in three hours and 46 minutes. To lead a flight of these babies is a serious responsibility. Captain Cooper is well qualified for his job. He started flying in World War II and fought with the 332nd Fighter Group in Italy. Except for a short break in 1946, he's been flying ever since. The Glamour Department of New York's Fabulous Apparel Center is composed of the courtiers or custom designers. Shining brilliantly in this firmament of fabrics and fur is the talented Charles Sorrells, who creates luxury furs that especially enhance Milady's beauty and personality. The courtier's individual touch makes him great. Sorrells personally draws each canvas pattern. His partner, Michelle, master craftsman in charge of the studios, searches quantities of prime mink for those most suitable for this specific design. Each pelt is perfectly matched for quality, shade, and texture, and pinned into precise position. Literally thousands of perfect hand stitches are made by the specialist who assembles the masterpiece now taking shape. Adding icing to the cake is the finishing artist who places the imported silk linings with loving care. Made of natural ranch mink, the finest in existence, it will preview today for fashion critics. Sorrell's Michelle Custom Furs, which received critical acclaim, are then available at Rose Morgan's House of Beauty in New York City. Confident yet nervous before the showing, the partners relax with their favorite cigarette. As in all matters concerning perfection and quality, they agree on the brand that satisfies. Honored among the exclusive guests are Broadway actor-producer John Marriott, widely known as the Chesterfield Reporter, and lovely Anne Prince, successful director of the Parkview School of Charm. It's evident they plan to enjoy themselves. The show opens with a cerulean mink capelet, short, sweet, and youthful. 
the blue mink is a dream in itself. For gala occasions, a white fox capelet flatters both young and old. Barbara Watson model Trudy Whiteman shows the ranch mink at its finest. It's the final number among many unveiled today. And what do the critics say? Continued and increasing success for the creations of master designer Charles Sorrells. At Van Cortlandt Park, northeastern home of the New York Critic League, reporter Fred Samuel greets cricketeers of Montserrat and Trinidad. The man in the hat is Edmund Holder, one of the oldest proponents of modern cricket and a favorite of the fans. He's an expert at both bowling and batting. In cricket, the batsman remains up as long as he can hit, and specialists like Holder run up some fantastic scores. The bowler or pitcher hooks his curves with an overhand stiff arm. He has to be an iron man. No baseball field in the United States is large enough for a cricket field. An extra long hit can score six runs. A broken wicket means the batter's out. Each team has but one inning or turn at bat. Every man hits until put out. A toss of the coin determines who takes the field. And here's the running pitch down the 66-foot lane to the wicket. It's a hit and he goes for scores. A batsman is not required to run on a hit ball. The decision is his. If he thinks he can make it, he goes. Playing the long shots makes the game exciting, and these league leaders will take off on anything that looks good. Negro athletes keep alive the first game played in America, the forerunner of our present national pastime. Thank you.